Hi, well, thank you for having me on. I, I think uh, global investors and the media are probably focused on Afghanistan uh, because of the U.S. withdrawal. I don't think it has a systemic impact on uh, where the global economy is headed at all. In fact, uh, it has limited impact, including even from China's own perspective, as it pursues a Eurasian strategy uh, that's focused on building linkages of transportation and infrastructure across Central Asia. So I think Afghanistan is overrated right now, and very shortly we'll all be talking about something else, and I think specifically that will be Iran and, and the Persian Gulf. I, I want to get back to Afghanistan, though. Not talking about it from a global standpoint, what about the, the, if, if that becomes just a full-on humanitarian crisis, the economy collapses, the Taliban come in very heavy-handed, what is that going to do? It, it really doesn't have any impact. Uh, Afghanistan's significance is that it marks the the extreme imperial overreach that nations occasionally do. Russia, 1979, uh, invasion of Afghanistan marked the culmination of the Soviet Union after which it, it crumbled. The UK on twice, uh, two separate occasions, mm -hmm. overreached and stumbled in Afghanistan. And now the United States, after 20 years, has stumbled in Afghanistan. So the point is that for a, for a foreign great power to penetrate into the center of Asia, an attempt to achieve some kind of military objective, whatever it may be, uh, is overreaching and it's usually punished uh, by reality. And once that occurs, that invading force then withdraws with much acrimony and the world later goes back to not, not focusing on this particular corner. Interesting. Uh, all points well taken. Matt, the Taliban does not have any goodwill globally. Is there any way we can expect any kind of in international uh, financial community to come to Afghanistan's aid? Well, you know, the, the Taliban may present a political wing and a semblance of uh, legitimacy as they solidify power and attempt to bring in uh, foreign aid and, and money and, and an investment. Of course, they would be very glad to see China and other powers mm -hmm. invest there. Uh, but of course, you know, we've had a war for 20 years, so there's no real basis for the Taliban to have moderated uh, to a great extent. It's usually the act of governing that causes uh, militant groups to moderate over time. Uh, the Taliban has been fighting for 20 years, so I think they're going to be very aggressive for quite some time, and they'll, and they'll have a very aggressive militant wing for a long time, uh, even if they uh, try to uh, pull off a, a transition into civilian political leadership. Uh, so I think that's going to be a persistent risk. Uh, there's, of course, the risk of harboring terrorism, which is right. very significant for India and others. Uh, but there's also just the fact that the region itself and the country itself will be unstable. You talked about China's investment. I know India's cut off at least trade for the time being. Hamid Karzai and Abdullah Abdullah are still in Kabul, apparently angling for some role in the, what would be a Taliban government. Do you think the Karzai or Abdullah Abdullah have any clout left to help that nation? Uh, you know, I mean, they stayed there, so they must have a modicum of clout. But the truth is that this is a... Uh, we're in the law of the jungle now. We're in the, uh, uh, we're in the world of realism, where uh, the force of arms is what ultimately produces political power. And so I think the Taliban will be viewed as the victors that uh, expelled the American invaders, and that's going to uh, deliver them a presumption of, of control for, for a long time to come. Yeah, Matt, what is the saying? Uh, history is w written by the winners? Well, so much uncertainty. Is there any positive takeaway from perhaps even the central bank and its economic pers perspective? We're talking about 36 million people that are living in Afghanistan. Is there any kind of hope for those people moving forward? Not, not really. There's not a firm basis for projecting that Afghanistan will become a stable, normal, and successful country. I mean, I, I would say, you know, again, it would be uh, it would be very good for the people there if the Taliban did produce a, a you know, a kind of political um, civilian government that then sought investment from abroad in order to try to build infrastructure. Uh, but the conditions in that country are such that, uh, you know, really, I think it would be a fool's errand to outline uh, a bright future. And that's why so many are choosing to leave the country and why we have a new wave of refugees exiting and, and seeking a better place abroad.